once again, it's time for your favorite podcast, Survival of the Fittest is the Soup Du Jour. I'm Roberto Trevino, and yes, once again, I have some thoughts and some ideas and whatever to share with y'all. So, lately, you know, I tell you what, we're going into the summer months. For me, as a chef, the summer months always represent something very exciting. And that is vegetables. Beautiful, wonderful vegetables. Not that you can't get them year-round. Not that you can't get things imported. But sustainable local vegetables. We're very lucky here in Central Florida for that to be the case. So, I'm so looking forward to this season because I've always been a big believer in wonderful vegetables on the plate. Not only as part of the ingredients or part of the 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 actual composition of the plate, but as garnish, as, as you know, the ability to make your plate look that much more refreshing, you know, that much more exciting and colorful. And those, I think, are the kind of elements that chefs look for. Some, some don't. Some don't. And I, I never could understand that, you know. Some people just kind of are very monochronic, mono. Mon- monochromatic when it comes to their plating style and I go like hmm you know why would that be the case when there's just so many wonderful things to put on the plate now of course budget realities sometimes get in the way of those things but this is where your creativity as a chef really needs to take center stage and where you need to just sort of push it and uh, you know once again it being summer allows us to really kind of just pick and choose the best of the best. Use your vegetable peeler. Use your your knife. Use different things that help you kind of make these vegetables usable for you. I mean, how many slices of carrot can you get with the vegetable slicer, you know, and use that as a garnish? I always think that those are the things that really make the difference and really make the difference as a chef, you know. So, we're in the summer months. I'm looking forward to the great stuff that we have here. But another thing that's very important is that you're able to give your guests exciting plates. And not only that, just kind of share with them the beauty of life. And I think that vegetables say that. You know, sometimes, you know, people say, oh, well, I love a good steak, or I love chicken, or I love pork, and I love carne frita, or I love, you know, on and on. You can go on. Rarely people say, like, I love broccoli, I love spinach, I love, you know, uh, beets and, you know, carrots. But this is what really makes a dish exciting. I mean, like I've said before, the star of the dish is always that wonderful 14-ounce, you know, New York steak. That wonderful, you know, free-range chicken breast stuffed with porcini mushrooms and gorgonzola cheese or whatever you want. We can go down the line, you know. But the star is never the vegetables that go with those dishes. And I think that it's the other way around. I think that you're going to have, people are going to love a big steak. They're going to love that exciting chicken dish. They're going to want that super tasty pork dish that you make. But how can you make it that much more exciting? And I think that's where vegetables become the true star of any dish. And so we're definitely in those months. Um, Nothing says to me more than the beauty of life than a garden. You know, and I love my plates to look like a garden. There's a sort of haphazard sort of chaos that can be your garden because plants grow the way they want to grow. Even though you can keep them in perfect straight lines, they still kind of do their thing, you know, not to mention the root system. But it's a wonderful thing. And uh, I think that a plate that looks like a, like a wonderful garden is just that much more aesthetically pleasing. When you go to the park and you walk around and you see wonderful gardens, you get a wonderful feeling. And I think you can achieve that on your plate as well by using more vegetables and Having that same philosophy or having that same vision as a garden. And I think in the end, you know, you'll find that you, your plating style gets more and more elaborate. The more and more, dis, you know, the more and more you discover 
things like this, like vegetables and, and herbs and different things that you want to use to garnish. I cannot stand when people just don't garnish their food. I don't get it. You know, and I don't knock it. It's not like it's any worse or you're a terrible chef. I don't say that at all. I'm not here to judge. But I'm here to say, man, push it. You know, just push it and make it wonderful for your guest. And, you know, another thing I'm thinking, you know, is life itself. You know, you know, people take for granted the fact that they're able to cook food for people. To, to present them plates of food. They take for granted waking up in the morning. And these things, you know, become so important when, you know, you don't have the ability to cook anymore or you're not able to cook for your guest anymore for a variety of reasons, whether you got sick, whether you went broke, whether you're not. Nothing is more heartbreaking to a chef than not being able to cook not being able to produce wonderful things for their guest. And this is my point. If you have the ability to cook, if you have the ability to innovate and think about doing wonderful things because you're still young, you still have health, you still can cook, you're still in the restaurant business, then you should. Because the day will come when you will not be able to do what you love the most. And I know most chefs you know, aren't in the kitchen because it's the only job they can have. It's the job that they chose, and it's the passion that drives them as chefs. Not always the case, but I'd have to say, even those grumpy chefs love to be in the kitchen, or they just wouldn't do it, because it's an intense, very, it can be hot and miserable at times, and but there's that love, that love that chefs have for just producing food and once again let me stress it's not forever you know one thing we know in life is that there's a point where se acaba todo. it ends and you don't get to be the chef anymore so while you do have life while you do have health while you do have that passion you should really make it worth it for you and in the end it's worth it to your guest and therefore it will be a success and in the end you want to be a successful chef you want to be able to say yeah I did it and I did it well and I did it right and people loved me for it and what more do you want in life we started this podcast talking about vegetables but vegetables inspire me to recognize the beauty of life and these are the things today that in this podcast I wanted to share with you only because it's the summer and I still have the passion to be the chef, you know. And whenever I am lucky enough to be in my kitchens or a kitchen, because as a consultant I get to go into different kitchens, but to be able to do that, to share the passion, to inspire cooks and front-of-the-house servers to push the beauty of what you're putting on a plate. These are the things that I believe make life worth it. And when the time comes and you're no longer be able to you're no longer able to to do it, then you need to look back and I think that smile will come on your face when you know you did a good job. So, can vegetables do this for you? Can vegetables save you and and help you realize the beauty of life? Yes, I believe so. We're in the summer months. It's Central Florida. We love all the vegetables that are available to us. I think it's the case in most parts of the world, you know. Everyone has what they grow best. Everyone uses what inspires them most, what people enjoy the most. But definitely try and educate. And I don't mean that in a sort of educate your guest. Because there was a time in history when chefs would say, you must educate your guest. And I always thought it sounded a little bit arrogant. But... I think you want to expose your guest. You want to show your guest. And you want to, you know, definitely make sure that they understand the passion that goes into what you're doing. And I believe that it's achievable when you really do it from the heart. And once again, you don't have to have all those expensive vegetables. You don't have to have an, an, you know, a ton of different things in your kitchen. 
You just got to have more heart than anything. A few little this and that to make it look that much better is going to go very, very far with your guests, very, very far with your vision, very, very far with the future of your restaurant and or your career. And that's what we're after here. Definitely in this podcast, we want to talk about the restaurant business. Even though I always go off on different tangents, the fact is that it's all about the biz. It's all about doing it, doing it well, understanding your role, and understanding your responsibility to taking your vision and your food and whoever you're representing forward, your staff, and even your guest. Because I believe when you do it well and you're doing something very exciting, the people who most speak how exciting and well you do things are your guest. They're the ones who take that word out. They're the ones who bring that excitement to your dining room. And you achieving it on the plate for your guest will achieve it in the end for that. That sort of word of mouth, that excitement that people want to go to your restaurant, they want to try your food, and it's going to happen through your guest. So never underestimate what people are ordering. Sometimes, you know, you'll get a bunch of orders and go, Ugh, again, Ugh, another order. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. But always know that every one of those plates and every one of those guests will take the message forward. And this is very important. This is the difference. So get yourself ready for the summer months. Get your menus ready and be exciting. Get your guest to feel what you're feeling when it comes to the passion involved with you plating your food. Now, remember, you only get one chance at life and you be thankful every day and definitely make sure that you're doing something that drives you and makes you happy. So you can always find us on Instagram, Twitter. We're on all kinds of different platforms these days. I believe 19 at this point, and quite frankly, that's a lot. All right? I'd like to thank Podbean. They're really big fans, and I'm a big fan of theirs as well. So find them on Twitter and Instagram and follow them as well. They're very inspiring, and they're very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Survival of the Fittest. This is the Soup Du Jour. I'm Roberto Trevino, your chef. And happy to say so, the man who can help you stay inspired in the kitchen. So keep on keeping on. Do what you do. Y buen provecho. Saludos a Puerto Rico, Texas, Mexico, New York, California, Dublin, hey, Tokyo, everybody in between. We love you. Take care. <laughs>